The title is A Blessing of Going Out and Coming In Through the Entrances of Ezekiel's Temple. One of the uh, popular prayer requests nowadays among us is that please let us enter into Ezekiel's Temple. How can we enter Ezekiel's Temple? We cannot jump over the wall. We cannot break through the wall. We have to go through the doors and the entrances. This man whose appearance was like the appearance of the bronze showed Ezekiel every corner in Ezekiel's temple, and they traveled always through the door. Even the glory of God left the temple through the gate and entered the temple through the gate. And our main text today tells us how important entrances of Ezekiel's temple are. Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 11 says, If the people are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the house. And here God emphasized, must make known to them the entrances. Also, Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 5 says, um, we must hear um, all about the house of the Lord and concerning all its laws. And the verse ends with the mark well the entrances of the house with all exits of the sanctuary. Because we are the ones who have to go into the Ezekiel's temple, it is very important that we know about these doors. And these are the most important part of Ezekiel's temple, the wall, the entrance, and the chambers. But all of these have intimate relationship with holiness. That's why the wall of Ezekiel's temple separates the holy from the profane. The entrance restricts the entry, and chambers are places to fulfill duties. And so the wall, the entrance, the chambers, they all face the holy place and the most holy place especially the entrances. And entrances are the ones um, that determine who are qualified to enter into the temple. And the doors are the places through which the people can also exit. So I'd like to share grace with you through the entrances of Ezekiel's temple. First is the positions of the entrances and ordinances of entering and exiting the temple. And there's so many of them on Ezekiel's temple. First, there's gates in the outer court. This is the outer court. There's east, north, and south. There are the gates. And so this is the inner court. And there's east, north, and south gates. Total six gates. And each gate is 50 cubits, long cubits. And it is 25 cubits wide. And height is 60 cubits high. It is a huge building, and all six of the gates are exactly the same. And then toward the, and the gates between um, the, uh, the outer gate and the inner gate, they are facing each other. This is the main sanctuary. There is a gate and door to the nave, and door to the most holy place. And so the doors become smaller and smaller as we go in further. And there are chambers that surrounds the sanctuary. And there is an entryway on the south and the north. And there are also chambers for the priests. And the entryway is also one in the north and one in the south. And also all the other chambers have their doors. So these entrances have their ordinances. We must understand this. Um, especially they have intimate relationship with the people's moving line during the worship to God. So let's go to the ordinances for the um, outer gate these outer gate facing east must stay closed. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 2 says it must be shut and never be opened again. Why? Because God entered by it. So expression that God came in means he had left once before. And that is in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 3 to 17 because the Israelites committed idolatry and it was so bad. 
And all of that is recorded in this passage. Both the leaders and the people worshipped idols inside the temple. Not only that, they turned their back toward the temple to worship the sun in the east. And God could no longer stay in the temple because of their idolatry. So in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 18, um, through chapter 11, we can see the glory of the Lord actually left from the gate facing east, toward east. But when Ezekiel's temple uh, was shown with the new temple, God shows how this glory that had left before will enter again by the gate of facing east. And because of the glory of God has come in, now this gate must be shut closed. And this is a promise that God's glory will never leave again. And that he will stay with the people. This is Jehovah Shammah. I mean, the Lord is there. And also, there is a strict distinction um, between God and his creation. Because through now... That only God can come in. So he separates God from his creation so that no creation can freely enter through the gate by which the God, the creator, came. And so even the prince, is of, of course, a high status among the people, has to be humble because he cannot go in completely through the gate facing the east. He can only stand by the threshold of the gate facing east in the inner court. Now, secondly, let's go to the ordinance for the inner gate facing east. So during the first six days is a labor, these gates are closed, but it's open for the worship rituals on the Sabbaths and the new moons, and they are remain open until the evening because that's the day of worshiping God. Therefore, open gates signify that God is accepting our worship. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 10, is a good comparison for this. Because in Malachi chapter 1, verse 10, God says, Because the people do not fear God, but they are only giving worships on the outside on, as a, a, because their obligation. God says, I wish there were among you who would shut the gates, right? So God was rejecting our worship. But saying that the gates are open means God will accept our worship. And through this open worship, we are able to meet who? Meet God. You know, we slam the door into the face of people who don't want to see, right? But when the door is open, we can go in and meet with one another, right? So this door being open signifies restoration of our relationship with our living God. Now, Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 12, that um, there are also a time of offering besides the Sabbath and the new moon. When? when the prince has a free will offering and want to give a peace offering. So when the prince gives offering, that the gates will open again. And it will be open only temporarily for him. Um, and then afterwards, the gates are closed again. So God has granted the opening of the gates whenever there is a free will by the prince to give a worship. So whenever... We have filled with the free will to worship God. I pray our Father God is waiting for this and that he will open wide his gates to receive us in. And now let's go to the moving line on the Sabbath and the new moons and other feasts. Circle number three, the moving line on the Sabbath, the new moons and other feasts. Now Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 8, it says, um, the prince enters yeah, he shall come in by the way of the porch of the gate, and he will go out by the same way. So he comes in like this, and then he um, will worship at the threshold. We learned this yesterday. The threshold is Mipton. So the prince will come in from... It will come into the inner gate facing east, and it will reach only to the threshold, and he worshiped there. The people will worship at the doorway. The doorway is a petahu, means the entryway of the gate. So for the same inner gate, the people will actually stop at the doorway here. And then inside the inner court, there is, the high, uh, there is a priest worshiping and uh, performing ritual sacrifices. The prince will go as far as the 
um, threshold, and they are watch. And he can watch the sacrifice rituals, and he can relay this to the people who are not able to see this. But there's different moving line on the feast. During the feast time, so many people come together, and so they would not go out the same way they came in. People who came out in the north came in from north. They have to go out by south. People who came in from south will have to go out through the north gate. So people have to go straight out. This will avoid the confusion and keep order so that the worship rituals can be performed properly. And Ezekiel chapter 40, uh, 86 verse 10. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 10, it says, The prince shall go in among them. And this shows that the prince must have an intimate relationship of sharing the pleasures and pains of life with his people. And this prince will be different from the former king. Sometimes he will invoke idolatry among the people, but he will be like King David to restore the true um, uh, faith community. So you see, a lot of people are gathering in the temple during the feast, and this foreshadows the day when all nations will stream to the house of God to worship Him. You see, God is very meticulous in showing what the moving line is in the worship and the temple, and this really gives us great vision of how things will be in the end time. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, it says that God is not God of confusion, or of, but of peace. And so we are now giving worship um, online right now as a summer conference. But when we actually gather together um, in Yeoju, um, we all um, have to uh, follow the, um, the orders and schedules, right? So that we can keep the order during the summer conference. So... The Ezekiel temple was never been built on this earth, but God so meticulously showed even the moving line of the people, which tells us that this Ezekiel temple is not an imaginary thing, but it's very real for our God. So um, we um, are now receiving teaching only about the, what Ezekiel temple looks like, but God is also teaching us the ordinance of the temple. That means we keep good life of faith as saints on this earth and which will prepare for us in the kingdom of God. So let's go to big point number two, mark well the entrance of the house. And that's in Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 5. Clearly says, mark well the entrance of the house. In Hebrew, mark well, it means to set up in one's heart, to set up in one's heart. And there are uh, a another rendering of this uh, verse is that um, see who can come into the temple. So we can then check what kind of people actually came to the temple before. It says the foreigners uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh actually came into the sanctuary of God and this violated the covenant with God and they will not be able to come into the sanctuary. And God makes it very clear in Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 9. It's not that all foreigners cannot come in. Foreigners who are circumcised are able to come in. But please note, God is not talking only about the circumcision in the flesh, but also in heart. Circumcision in the heart. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26, it says, so All the nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised of heart. See, God is pointing to the heart. And Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 says that those who have been circumcised in their hearts can love God with all the hearts and with all the soul. However, God's pointing out that the Israelites were not circumcised in their hearts. It was all fake. So they were no different from the Gentiles. So if you see in Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 8, um, these people did not even um, keep 
they did not take charge of their own duties, but they set foreigners to keep charge on their behalf. They are not doing what they're supposed to do, and they're doing something else. And this resulted in interruption of the worship and destruction of the temple. On the outside, it may seem like the world powers came and destroyed the temple, but this was a result of a uh, uh, the people who were supposed to be in charge of the sanctuary did not fulfill their role. See, because of this wrongful entry, entry of the temple, created such chaos and disorder in the temple. That's why Jesus went to the temple and cleansed it. He drove out all those people who had made the temple of Father God into robber's den. And he um, really pointed this out to the Levites, the religious leaders, who are supposed to teach people the difference between what's holy and profane. And yet they were actually lead um, in defiling the temple. In John chapter 10 verse 7, Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep, and I am the door. Jesus Christ is the only door of our salvation. Jesus is the only Savior. So if we do not through this, if you do not go through this door, then we are, then they are a thief and a robber. So Jesus rebuked the religious leaders and Sadducees and the scribes who um, were filled with hypocrisy. And Jesus said, you shut off the kingdom of heaven from the people and you do not enter in yourselves, nor allow those who are entering to go in. So Jesus is rebuking those people who are not fulfilling their duties, but are busy only pursuing their own profits. Is this a question that only uh, is for the uh, Sadducees and Pharisees? Even though we may be confident in our life of faith, if we're just pretending to really believe and we don't really understand God's will, that means we too can fail to enter. And not only that, we can prevent others from going in to the um, kingdom of God. If our thoughts of flesh and thoughts of spirit are uh, mixed all together and, and entangled, and we cannot set apart what's holy from profane, then we are not able to go in. Not only that, we can stop from other people from going in too. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, Jesus points to this out. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. So even if we may be in position, even if we may be doing a lot of things, but if we do not know the will of the Father God and do it, then we will not be able to enter. And Jesus says, I never knew you. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, Apostle Paul also said, that I am it says I discipline my body and make it a slave so that after I preach to others I myself will not be disqualified and Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 also speaks about how we must um, must form a hold a form of godliness then Number two, who can receive these blessings of going out and coming in through these gates? Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, it says, going into, going into the gates um, to the city are going to the tree of life. And it expresses as, as a right. And who can go in? Those who are ashamed um, of their deeds. And the Ezekiel temple says, so through the repentance only through the repentance we can go into Ezekiel's temple. So wearing a bright fine linen is a righteous act of the saints, as says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. These righteous acts, um, we can actually look at this further based on Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Among the messages to the church in the Asia Minor, there's a message to the church in Sardis. And here, God says, I have not found your deeds completed. The word completed is plero, means to fill, to complete, or finish. 
So if that means peop- they did not um, uh, fill or complete anything according to uh, the standard. And what is the standard? What you have received and what you heard, which is referring to all the teachings that we have received, the word, the teaching, the training that we have received is a standard as to define if we have completed our deeds. If we do this, then we will become worthy people and we'll walk with the Lord in white. And so these people are not the ones who have the name that are alive but are dead. They are, they are not like this. They are the people who are worthy to walk with the Lord in white. So the doors distinguish who are qualified to enter, right? So in the end time also, the doors will be the checkpoint for us to enter. Now, COVID-19 is really reminding us that there are many, many changes and the time um, is really alerting us. Uh, For example, when we come into our church because of COVID-19, we have to do many checks at the gate. The the gate is checkpoint. Those who are wearing masks, those who have completed temperature check, and those who have signed off their names and the addresses, they can come into the temple, uh, the sanctuary, right? So even with COVID-19, entering into the church is very difficult, right? How far more it will be for Ezekiel's temple? And we might, um, I, you know, be anxious. Oh, would I really make it into Ezekiel's temple? But our God uh, granted us this word because he trusted that we will believe to the end. And I believe our God is cheering us up and by trusting us. And so... Um, Let us truly trust in our Father God's love and guiding care so we will press on to enter through the gates of Ezekiel's temple. And also, those who wash their robes will go through the gates and will go as far as to the tree of life. But Adam and Eve were not able to guard their hearts um, that had received the word of God. And instead, they listened to the words of the serpent, and in the end, they were banished from the Garden of Eden. And so cherubim and the flaming sword guarded the way to the tree of life thereafter. So what's important is to guard our hearts. In order to guard our hearts, we must be circumcised in our hearts, in our ears. Eve just picked up hearing anything that was being said to her. That's not guarding your ears, right? So we must really keep the uh, guard the doors of our heart really well. But most importantly, we must um, guard the doors of our lips. If we're not able to guard the doors of our lips, how can we guard the doors of the temple of Ezekiel, right? And Jude chapter 1 verse 15, it says, There will be a judgment upon all those uh, on ungodly deeds and ungodly way and ungodly uh, ways of speaking, right? So when we are able to guard the doors of our hearts and our lips and um, our ears, then we are able to pass through the cherubim. So we can also become the ones not only to enter, but also to fulfill the role um, of guarding the gates as well, like the cherubim. So I'd like like to conclude now. In the time of the Old Testament, the Levites were the gatekeepers. The Levites were gatekeepers. They restricted the entry of those who were banned by the law, and they also um, guided those people who came to worship. And there were six um, um, chambers in the Ezekiel's um, uh, um, and the gates of the Ezekiel's temple. So um, this means each gate has six guard rooms, and this tells us that we are the ones who will go into um, through these gates, but we are also the spiritual Levites in this generation. That means we are also the gatekeepers. So gatekeepers must not only close the gate, but also open at the right time. So let's go to um, Psalm 24, verse 7 through 8, and read this verse together. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen. The most important time for the 
door to open is for the God of glory to enter. Jesus overcame the power of sin and death on the cross, and he went up to Father God. And the victorious Lord will return and consummate redemptive history and will open all the gates of New Jerusalem so that we can receive our, our Lord. So may the King of glory pass through us as a gate. If we believe Jesus Christ, who is the only door, then we become those gates. And if we do not fit into dimension, or if it's not clean enough so that he cannot go in, or the door is locked and broken and, and our glory of God cannot enter. So it's not only about us um, going through the door, but can our God of glory go through us as his door, as his gates? So in Psalm 121 verse 8 says, God will guard our going out and coming in forever. This is the blessings of going out and coming in and means that he will bless us in every aspect of our lives. And in the end, there will be also ultimate blessings of being able to enter into Ezekiel's temple. But the most important thing is the God of glory being able to come in and go out of us freely as he wants. That, I believe, is the greatest blessing. And may we um, go through all the gates of Ezekiel's temple and ultimately face God's glory in the most holy place. Our God will dwell in the temple forever now, in the new temple, and new worship will begin. So in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 2, it says, Open the gates, and the righteous nation may enter. And then Isaiah chapter 26 is about New Jerusalem, and it's uh, known as a song that the people will sing in the New Jerusalem. And he says, open the gates that the righteous nation may enter. So ones that remains faithful. So the righteous nation, that they may be the Gentile nations, will enter the nations that are, they remain faithful. So in Revelation chapter 21, verse 25 through 27, it says, on that day, The people will bring the glory and honor, and the honor of the nations will come into Jerusalem. And there will surely be a day that um, all the nations will come together and worship God. So on the day of the consummation of redemptive history, let us not only enter into Ezekiel's temple by passing through the gates, but let us be the ones to open those gates wide to receive all those who bring the glory and the honor of the nations and guide them to our living Father God so we can together behold the glory of God and worship together. Let us pray. Our living Father God, before this unprecedented tribulation to come upon this world, you have granted us this book, 11th book of Ezekiel's temple, so that we can truly understand the mysteries of the Bible and overcome all the hardships may befall us. And thank you for equipping us with this special technology so that we can still unite together despite the difference in time and the space. Uh, Father, but still we are so sad not being able to see one another, but you are in control of the time. And we pray that you will listen to all of our prayers and intercessions so that the people who have left the word may come back, knowing what time it is now, so that the covenant of the people will be together as one to worship you. The COVID-19 pandemic will never become excuse in our lives, Father, and help us to rather take this time as an opportunity to prepare food for the time of famine that's coming ahead, so that we can become prudent five virgins who can prepare for the end time. Father God, when you return, we pray that we, be, we are the ones to open the gates of the Jerusalem 
so that we can welcome all nations into your house. We pray that that you will receive all the glory for the remaining hours left in the conference, and we. Pray all of this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, who always comforts us and and gives us the victory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.